Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Roadmaster Smart Diode Wiring Kit here on our 2018 Chevrolet Equinox. So a wiring kit is going to be one of the components that we need to successfully flat tow our vehicle here. Now the wiring is simply going to transmit the signals from the motorhome to our towed vehicle here. That way we can let other motorists on the road know what signals we're going to be making, allowing us to arrive to our destination safe and sound. Most cases, the vehicle is going to block the taillights on the motorhome. Therefore, if we didn't have any way to transmit those signals, no one around us is really going to know what we're going to be doing, which could create errors and possibly collisions. So there's many different types of the wiring kits that you can use to successfully transfer the signals from the motorhome to the vehicle. This certainly isn't the only one, but this is sort of going to fall under the classification as a diode wiring kit. Now, some of the other options are going to be a bulb and socket kit. So a diode wiring kit is going to be pretty much splicing into the factory wiring with sort of a module in between to help protect everything. A bulb and socket kit, we're actually going to be drilling into the taillight housing and installing an extra bulb. I really don't like these. Um, there's not a lot of room for air with those in regards to your drilling and they can also lead to leaks, possibly damage the taillight housing. So they're definitely not my favorite. And some of the other options, I'm sure you guys have all seen these before, especially if you flat towed or just seen others flat towing on the road, they're pretty common. And that's going to be a simple magnetic set of lights that just sit on the hood of the vehicle. Then you run a wire over the roof into the motorhome. And those do work, but they're usually not the greatest option. You have to deal with the scratching of the paint with the magnet. That's a big issue for those. And they're also kind of unsightly because we're going to be routing that wire over the roof. So definitely not a permanent thing. If this is a vehicle that you're going to be flat towing consistently, you're really going to want to look into the other two options, whether that be the bulb and socket or the diode. But as we said, there's some issues with, the or issues with the bulb and socket that I don't really like. The diode wiring kits are really the best option. This particular kit in here is a really great option as well. So Roadmaster actually offers a couple different kinds of diodes. Now, some of the older kits, they just come with the standard diodes and those work great for a lot of vehicles. But as technology is progressing in these vehicles, the taillight circuits are more complex. For this particular vehicle here, it has what's known as a variable voltage taillight circuit. Therefore, all of our signals are actually sent on one wire. Therefore, the tail, the stop and turn for each side is sent on one wire. And how the vehicle deciphers that is, it sends a variable voltage depending on which circuit that is. That way the tail light and the computer knows which one to illuminate. Now, this is great technology. You know, it cuts down on the amount of wires. It's a little bit more seamless, but the older diodes weren't able to recognize that. With the smart diodes here, it's gonna be able to pick up on those variable voltage letting us know which circuit needs to be activated so we don't have any issues here with our kit. So in regards to the actual smart diodes, we have two different options. You have a kit that just comes with the wiring and the diodes, everything you need to pretty much set it up for the exception of a trailer connector umbilical cord. Now, if you already have a tow bar that has one of these built in or you're just simply reusing one from an old setup, that's probably the kit you're gonna wanna go with. But if this is a completely new installation, you don't have any of the other parts, you're gonna to wanna to opt for the kit that comes with the umbilical cord as well as the trailer connector. It's more of a complete kit and gonna be geared more for you guys that are setting up your vehicle to flat tow for the first time. But again, there is options depending on what we need so we don't have extra parts we're not gonna be using. So this particular kit here is gonna provide us with the most basic signals we need to remain legal. And that's going to be the stop and turn signal circuits for both the driver and passenger side, as well as the tail light circuits for both sides as well. So it's gonna have all the basic functions we need to remain legal driving out on the road. So if you opt for the kit that comes with the umbilical cord and the trailer connector, this is gonna allow us for extra circuits. So a lot of times vehicles require a charge line, which is basically a power wire run from the motorhome's battery to the vehicle's battery. This allows us to charge the vehicle's battery. That way when we get done flat towing, we don't have a dead battery when we go to head in town. Now this particular kit doesn't actually come with that charge line, but it does allow you to run this through the umbilical cord using the extra slots in the six-way connector which gets mounted on the vehicle. And then we have a nice sturdy umbilical cord here. This is very durable, they last a long time. These are really my favorite umbilical cords on the market. This particular option here is coiled as well. That way you don't have to worry about it dragging the ground. As you can see, we have a tow bar here without any guides or anything. So that coiled connection there really helps it keep it tight to the bottom of the tow bar so we don't have any sagging, possibly damaging the cord. So in regards to kit components, regardless if we get it with or without the cord, we're gonna get pretty much everything we need to set up the vehicle side. 
and that's going to be the wiring harness that runs from the front of the vehicle to the rear with the tail lights our two diodes and then all of our miscellaneous wire connectors that we're going to need to make these connections you will however need a crimping tool possibly a wire stripping tool and we have some cost effective options here at e-trailer if you'd like to pick up one along with your kit so the real workhorse here of this kit is going to be the actual diodes themselves obviously we have the wires that are going to be carrying our circuits but the diodes they really serve an important role and what these things really do is they're going to work to separate the vehicle from the motorhome and the motorhome from the vehicle now the reason that's important is let's say we have an issue with the wiring on the vehicle could potentially short out the vehicle's tail lights and then if everything's connected without a diode that same electri electrical short is going to transfer to the motorhome and possibly affect those lights as well and we certainly don't want that happening what that diode does is it's going to prevent that electricity from backfeeding from one side to the other therefore if there's an issue with our vehicle here it's not going to affect the lights on our motorhome and vice versa if we have an issue with the motorhome the diodes are going to stop that electricity from flowing to the vehicle and preventing any issues here as well so overall it's just more or less a safeguard so in regards to installation this one really isn't that bad at all the bulk of the installation is going to be running the wire from the front to the rear so it is going to take you a little bit of time but i wouldn't say anything is particularly challenging you guys should be able to get this done in a few hours we only have to make one splice here on either side into the actual vehicle and i know a lot of people don't like to do that but it is very minor it could easily be reversed and again it's only one splice per side you will need some tools we talked about that a little bit just some common hand crimping tools and wire strimping tools but that's pretty much it definitely attainable something you guys might already have in your toolbox that being said let's go ahead and jump into that installation so we can show you guys how easy it really is so to start our installation today we're going to take our bonded wiring harness here now we're going to find a point at the front of the vehicle to tie this off to and then we're going to run the wiring harness from the front to the rear where our tail lights are now I would like to point out that obviously we have our bumper cover off so our vehicle looks a little bit different than what yours would look like. Now we can still do this with the bumper on. It's going to make things a little bit harder in regards to securing the actual connector there and obtaining the wires to the back of the connector. So I definitely recommend doing this when you finish the base plate installation before you put the bumper on. But again we can still do it with the bumper on. It's just easier with it off which is what we're going to be doing here. So with that said I'm just going to take one end of our harness here. I'm just going to tie it to where we have the trailer connector mounting bracket. Most of your base plates are going to come with one of these, so go ahead and just take some wire here, tie it to that bracket, and you want to make sure you leave yourself some extra slack, uh, about 6 to 12 inches of extra slack there, just so you don't run into any issues when you go to connect the trailer connector. So I'm going to go ahead and tie it off like so. And now we're going to take the other end of this wiring harness, we're going to route it all the way to the rear of the vehicle, we're going to go ahead and do that now and then we'll show you the path that we took. So you can see we have our wiring tied off to the trailer connector here and then I went ahead and went up and over the cross beam here of our base plate. Just use a couple zip ties to secure it to the top of the base plate. That way it doesn't fall down, get intertangled in our intercooler. We have another zip tie here and then you can clearly see our bonded four pole going on the bottom of the vehicle now, sort of up above this panel. I do have a zip tie here, sort of securing it to that frame rail, the cross member. Now we're going to come up and over this panel here. Now you should start to see this wire coming out from the bottom of the frame. Just snuck it between the space between the frame and the panel. And now we have some more zip ties here, securing it to the bottom of the frame rail. We need to be careful when we get in this area here because we have the mounts for our lower control arm. So everything there is going to be moving. We want to make sure we stay away from that. Come up and over here. It's going to be a nice little tab here. We can use a zip tie. And we're going to jump over here to where all our lines, we have our fuel lines, our brake lines, those are all the lines. We have another zip tie here. And then basically, from this point back, we're going to have it secured to the existing lines here, sort of behind this panel. You don't have to remove this panel completely, but if you have a 10 millimeter socket, you're going to see these plastic nuts on the outside here. So just remove the ones on the perimeter on this inside here. Then we should be able to pull down that a little bit. And then we could just simply sneak our wire behind that panel from this point here almost all the way to the rear. We're going to exit our panel coming out here at the back and again we just have some more zip ties securing it to existing wiring and lines. And Then we're going to come beside the fuel tank here up and over the filler neck for the gas tube. Now we need to be careful when we get to this point here. So this is the rear subframe. We have more moving components so we want to make sure we steer clear of those. It's kind of hard to see but our wire is going to go up and over our cross member here 
You can kind of see we have a couple zip ties up in here. That's going to ensure that we don't, the wire doesn't come down and get tangled up in the coil springs or the control arms. So it's very important that we make sure we tie this off. And now we're going to come up and over the subframe. I have another zip tie here, securing it to the top of the frame rail. And then we're pretty much just going to go out and around. And now I'm sort of behind the rear wheel well here in this area here. You can see we have a couple more zip ties securing it to some lines up there. But that's where we stopped. This is the rest of our wire. Next, we're going to go up top and we're going to pull this wire through once we remove the tail lights. So now that we have the wire ran to the rear of the vehicle, as we said, we need to go ahead and remove the tail light assemblies on either side. So in order to do that, you're obviously going to need to open up the hatch here. In this sort of area here, you're going to see these two little plastic covers. So we're going to take a flathead screwdriver. We're just going to pry open that cover like so, and that's going to reveal a torque screw. We have one on the top one on the bottom here. It's just like that. And then we're going to take a T15 Torx bit and remove both of those screws. And then once we get both of these out, we should be able to pull the taillight assembly away from the vehicle. Now keep in mind, these kind of are stuck in here a lot sometimes, so you just need to be careful that we pull straight out, but it does take a little bit of maneuvering and wiggling back and forth. Very rarely do they just come off really easily, so just get a good grip on it on the sides here and just pull straight out as best you can. Just like that. And now we can go ahead and undo our electrical connectors here. Now I will say yours is going to look a little bit different than what we have here because this particular vehicle has some aftermarket trailer wiring, but nonetheless, what we're going to do is we're just going to remove the bulbs from the taillight assembly by just twisting those out. So that one was a little bit harder to twist there. So I just went ahead and depressed that tab on the top there to remove it like so. So here's what our two factory connectors look like. So we have this large rectangular green one and a small gray one. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take a trim panel tool. We have a little push connector down here that's just sort of holding our wiring to the body of the vehicle. We want to pull that away to give us a little bit more room to work. So we're just going to get a trim panel tool or a uh, flathead screwdriver, whatever you have. Just sort of pry open that, pry it up just like so. But what we're going to do next is we're going to be very careful, but we're going to take a razor knife here. We're going to begin stripping the fabric tape. This stuff's kind of nasty. Um, it's really hard to get off, but we need to expose these wires here because these are the ones we're going to be splicing into. So we're going to take a razor knife there and we're just going to begin cutting that fabric tape as careful as we can because we obviously don't want to cut the wires underneath. So just take your time here and begin removing the fabric tape as best we can. We're going to go to about where this connection here is. So we're going to be removing some of the wire loom and the fabric tape as well. So just take your time here, make sure we don't damage the wire and just get that fabric tape off as best as we can. So we went ahead and got all that fabric tape off there. And again, just be careful that we don't pierce any of the wires. If you do, that's okay. Just make sure you cover it with some electrical tape. But now we have our two wires exposed coming from our rectangular green connector. So this vehicle uses a variable voltage tail light circuit. Therefore, all of our signals are actually gonna come from this one wire here. So this is gonna be a yellow slash gray wire. And this is going to carry our tail light circuit as well as our stop and turn signal circuit. So it actually makes things pretty easy for you guys because there's only one wire on the vehicle we're going to be splicing into. What we're going to do next is we're going to take a pair of cutters. We're actually going to cut this yellow and gray wire about at the center way here to where we have it stripped down. I stripped it down pretty much as much as I could before it starts to go behind the bumper there. So let's go ahead and find a good midway point here. Go ahead and clip that wire just like so. And once we do that, we're going to take our wire strippers here. We're going to be stripping back some of the jacket on each end of this wire. About a quarter inch or so is really all we need. So now that we have our wire cut, we'll take some wire strippers here and just strip back about a quarter inch of the jacket or so. About like that. We need to do that on both ends of the wire, but once we do get it stripped back, we're going to take one of our connectors here, place that over the wire, and then simply crimp it on. Once you do get it crimped, just go ahead and give the connector a little tug here just to make sure it's nice and secure there on the wire. 
So now once we have our two connectors on, we're going to take one of our diodes here. So we have two different ends. We have an ends with three ends, this end with two. The end with two is going to go to the plug here, which plugs into the tail light. And the end with three is going to go towards the vehicle. So we're going to take this one here coming from the back of the connector. We're going to attach that to the car brake out. Just like that. And then this one here is going to go to the car brake in. Just like that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our white wire strand that you have in your kit, about a foot long or so. And this is actually going to be for the ground, which is going to go to this terminal here on our smart diode. So we're going to take this white wire and on one end, we're going to crimp on one of those red connectors that we just showed you. And on the other end, we're going to crimp on a ring terminal which is going to come in your kit. You don't have to worry about getting that separate. So there's the spade connector. And then on the other end, as we said, we're going to attach a ring terminal. Once we get that crimped on there, as we said earlier, this end here is going to go to the spade coming from our diode. And this other end here, we're going to ground to the inside of the taillight pocket here to bare metal using the included self-tapping screw in your kit. So the next thing we're going to do is, if you remember a little bit earlier in the video, we showed routing a wiring harness from the front of the vehicle to the rear. So we actually need to use those wires now. So in order to get them up into the taillight pocket here, we need to take some sort of pulling mechanism, such as an airline that we have here, or if you have a string with a weight tied to it, like a nut, we can use that as well. But basically, we're just going to be sticking that down here between the back of the bumper and the body paneling on the vehicle. We're just going to be feeding that down until we can get it to come out underneath. So you may need to reach up in there and grab it. As you can see here, we have this side coming from underneath the vehicle, and then we still have our one at the top here. So here are those wires that we ran underneath earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this green wire here. This is for the passenger side, so we don't need this up into the taillight pocket on the driver's side. Therefore, I'm going to go ahead and just cut on the end of the wire there, and we can begin pulling this green wire away from the strand here, because again, we won't need it over here on the driver's side. The rest of the wires, though, the yellow, brown, and white, we will be running into the taillight pocket here on the driver's side. But once we get that green wire separated, we're going to take our airline tubing or whatever we use to guide behind the bumper and the body of the vehicle. And I'm going to tie the wires to that airline tubing, whether you have some electrical tape that usually works pretty well, or just a zip tie. Whatever we have to join the two together so they don't pull apart. But once we've done that, now we'll come back up to the top here, take our airline tubing, and begin pulling that, hopefully, bringing our wire along with it. So there we go, just like we wanted. And as soon as you get your wire up here, what I like to do is I like to take another zip tie here and just sort of zip tie it to the main lead here of the wiring harness. That way we don't have to worry about our wire ever falling down. And I would try to get that zip tied down there as far as you can. Um, just so we're not running into any issues with it interfering with putting our tail light back on. So just like that. So once we have our bundle of three wires into the tail light pocket here, you're going to split each of those. So you're going to pull the white wire free, the brown wire free, then the yellow wire. The first connection we're going to make is with the yellow wire. So you're going to have quite a bit of extra. You're going to go ahead and cut off that extra. Give yourselves about five or six inches from the edge of the tail light pocket here. And then we're going to crimp on one of our spade terminals and attach that to the RV brake terminal here coming from the smart diode. And now the other one you're going to have open is going to be the center one here for RV tail. So we're actually going to be attaching our brown wire to that using another one of the uh, spade terminals. However, unlike the yellow wire we did here, we actually need to piggyback that brown wire. So just use the extra you had that you cut off here and we're going to attach that to the other end of that spade terminal. So you're just going to twist those two brown wires together. One of the brown wires is going to be coming from the front of the vehicle. The other one here is going to be our jumper, and that's going to go over to the passenger side. 
But after we've done that, we should have one wire left over here, and that's going to be our white wire. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be grounding this one just the same method that we used to ground the diode. So I'm going to go ahead, cut off the extra here, crimp on one of our ring terminals, and attach it to the body with a self-tapping screw. And then last but not least, we're going to take this extra brown wire, our jumper brown wire for the taillight circuit. I'm going to run this wire back down behind the bumper there, and then we're going to run that over to the passenger side along with our green wire. So now that we have all of our connections made, I'm going to go ahead and re-secure our taillight on this side. Make sure you plug back in your factory connections. If you wanted to, you could use the adhesive backing on our diode to attach it to the body. I think I am just going to let ours hang because there's not really a lot of room. And if we attach it to some surface in here, it could hit our taillight. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it free there. We've got our wire secured so it's not going to fall down or pull out any of our terminals. So that being said, go ahead, re-secure our taillight. It will jump underneath and we'll route those two wires that we showed you routing down earlier over to the other side. So as we said, we're back underneath the vehicle here. We need to take those two wires, the brown and the green wires. Now, once we stick them back down, they should come out in this area here. And we're basically just gonna be routing these to the other side of the vehicle. It's pretty simple. You're just gonna be routing them behind the bumper supports here, up and over the flanges to the bumper beam just pretty much all the way across behind the bumper here until they're going to come out on the other side like so. And now we need to pull these wires up into the passenger side taillight pocket. We're pretty much just going to use the same method that we showed you earlier with our airline tubing. So just stick the airline tubing down through that pocket there. And once you have it underneath, just tie the two together. And then we'll go back up top, pull the airline tubing through, bringing our wires along with it. So now we've got both our brown taillight and our green stop and turn signal wire routed up into the taillight pocket here. So what we're going to do now is we're pretty much just going to be making the same connections that we showed you on the driver's side. So you're going to get your other diode there. Everything is going to be pretty much the same. The wire that we're going to be using is going to be a white slash yellow wire coming from that green rectangular connector. So again, we're pretty much just doing everything that we've already did, but over here on this side. So now you can see here we have all our connections made, just pretty much mirroring everything we did over on the other side. But once we have all that on, we can just go ahead and simply reinstall our taillights. And then we'll move up to the front of the vehicle, install our trailer connector so we can test everything out to make sure it's working properly. So now we're going to come to the front of the vehicle as we said earlier. We're going to take our wire strand that we routed. What we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just start peeling back some of these wires here. And I'm going to end up cutting them because we're not going to need this much length, but we did want to make sure that we didn't short ourselves. Let's just go ahead and peel each of those wires back here. Just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut some of the extra slack. We still want to make sure we lose ourselves a few inches past the bracket there. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to strip some of the jacket off of each of these four wires here just about a quarter inch or so. And after we strip that jacket off, I always like to twist them. That way the loose strands don't get hung up. And once we get all these prepped, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our rubber boot here. I'm gonna slide that over each of our four wires and back into there like so. And now I'm going to take our trailer connector here along with a small Phillips head screwdriver. So on the back of our trailer connector, we're going to have several different terminals. So these are going to be labeled. They're going to correspond with the wires here. Let's go ahead and find this one here. This is RT. So RT is going to be for the right stop and turn signal circuit. So that's going to be our green wire. So we'll loosen that screw there stick our wire into there. Now it doesn't quite go all the way down. That means we have a little bit too much wire and that's fine. I'll just go ahead and trim that off. Go ahead and stick it in that little socket there and just simply tighten the screw. So there's that one. Now we'll move on to the next one here. GD, that's gonna be for ground. So I'm gonna take the white wire and I think I made these a little bit too long, so I'm just gonna go ahead and trim some of the excess. 
But we're basically just going to continue doing this for our other wires here. The LT1 is going to be for the yellow wire, and then TM is going to be for the taillight circuit. Just go ahead, make sure you choose the correct locations there, and finish attaching the rest of your wires. So now that we have all of our connections made here, now there's a couple more things we need to do before we actually secure this. I want to test it out to make sure everything's working properly, and then we'll seal it up, apply the boot, and mount the trailer connector. So we're just going to take the umbilical from your kit here, just simply plug it in. And now you can use your motorhome for this. If you have that nearby, we're actually going to be using a test box. It makes it a little bit easier on us, but chances are you guys are going to need to use your motorhome. But either way, it should work fine. Just go ahead, plug one into the trailer connector, and then the other end into your motorhome, or in our case, a test box. So now we can go ahead and run through our signals here. You see we have the tail lights, the left turn, the brake lights, and then finally our right turn. So now that we know everything's working, we're gonna take some silicone sealer here and I'm just gonna seal up all of our connections. That way I don't have to worry about water getting in there, corroding the circuits. And we do offer this as well on our website in the form of RTV gasket maker. But just do as best we can, make sure we fill all the gaps here with silicone. Because again, we're just trying to prevent water from getting in there and causing corrosion, which would then in turn give us lighting issues. But once we get these all sealed up, we're just gonna simply place our boot over the wires, and then we can secure the connector to our bracket. So now that we have it mounted, we're just gonna simply take our included hardware and secure it to the bracket. Now these steps could kind of vary depending on what base plate kit you have and what bracket you're using. Most base plate kit manufacturers are gonna include their own bracket whereas the connector is gonna come with our wiring harness here. But we'll just simply tighten that down to secure the connector. And then finally, I'll take some dielectric grease here. I'll go ahead and just place them onto the pins inside the connector lid there. Again, just making sure if any water does get in there that it doesn't corrode the circuits. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Roadmaster smart diode wiring kit here on our 2018 Chevrolet Equinox.